Today, we are taking a look at how you, a person on the internet, could survive in the hellish world that is Dark Souls. In this scenario, you are not the chosen undead. You can't heal with an Estus flask. You don't know how to use swords. You don't know how to use magic. Just imagine you're driving to work one day and then you just get plopped into the world of Dark Souls and you have to survive. So we're gonna take a look at some of the most iconic major areas of the base game ordered from most likely to survive to least likely to survive to basically impossible. Oh no. All right, moving forward, we're gonna focus on the three main elements of survival, which is food, water, and shelter. We don't have to worry about fire, which as hellish as this Dark Souls world is, and we are gonna get into the details of how bad it gets. The nice thing is that there's just bonfires everywhere that never seem to go out. Yeah! We're also gonna favor strategies that avoid combat as much as possible. I don't know you personally, but I don't think that the average person is gonna fare well in a 1v1 against a literal demon. First up is Firelink Shrine. This is as good as it gets. There are friendly NPCs, beautiful music, there's a cozy fire. Ah. If the universe puts you in Firelink Shrine, you've actually got your best chance of survival, mainly because there is easily accessible water nearby, which is a huge plus. And a bonus is that you can easily boil it for safety by the bonfire, find a helmet or something that you can put the water in, flip it upside down, and there you go. You got yourself a nice smelly pot. For shelter, you could easily just sleep under the stars by the bonfire, but if it rains, there's also some overhead covering over by the elevators. There's a lot of different ways that you can make this work, and none of it requires passing by enemies. But uh, eventually you do have to eat. And that, that is a problem. So in the world of Dark Souls, most people are undead, which means food has been kind of an afterthought for a minute. In some areas of the game, there are like little critters that you could hunt and stuff, but in this area, uh, <laughs> do you like beef jerky? All right, who had uh, cannibalism in the first area of the game? Meep. I know, I know. Okay, but there's nothing else here, guys. I tried to find stuff, but you're gonna die if you try to make it to the undead berg, and then there's nothing else but skeletons. There is some vegetation to supplement your diet, but from what I've read, eating just grass and leaves makes it so you're eventually malnutritioned anyway, and then your teeth, like, fall out. It, it's horrible, so... It's up to you if you want to eat the forbidden jerky. It is Dark Souls. It's going to get pretty dark. The depths. Yeah, pretty steep drop off in survivability here. Um, the depths is crawling with enemies, but it does have something that is crazy rare in Dark Souls. Food. Now, how the hell you get down there and get it? You'd probably have to be a little creative. First off, believe it or not, but the butchers down there, the cooks are ladies. So I don't know, maybe you put on the charm a little bit or they always have pups with them. So maybe you're, you're a dog person, you befriend the dog and they start to like you. Um, at the end of the day, they are cooking up human meat. Oh. So maybe you bring a little something for them to cook up, make nice with them. I know you don't want to, but all I'm saying is the only cooks in the entire game are these broads. So try to make nice is probably your best bet at survival. As for shelter, luckily the depths has a ton of coverings and safety from the elements. Also, there is water. A lot of it. It does seem kind of poopy. I agree. But you can boil it for safety. And then if you get diarrhea from the water, well, the bathroom is right where you got the water from. It's really convenient. I hate this place. Sends Fortress. All right, so our options are getting pretty limited on areas that have shelter, water, and food. The fact that we're even talking about Sen's Fortress tells you that. I've gotten to the logic of where are the people that require food living in the world? And Sen's Fortress is filled with snake men that absolutely want to kill you, but these boys are eaten. These boys are built, all right? And from what I've read, they're not undead. So they're living, they're eating from where they're eating, what they're eating, where it is. I have no idea. But there is shelter in the fortress. It's, you know, it's literally a fortress. So, duh. Also, there is water. Seems like it's kind of thick water, but I don't know why it's thick. But hey, if you're trying to survive, you're going to find out. As for the food, honestly, your best bet is to just like sneak around and find where the snake men are keeping their stash of goodies. And I get what you're saying. The snake men and the traps are a huge problem. But if you stay alive long enough, they basically just 
cancel each other out. There's like a 50-50 chance that the traps will kill you or kill the snake man that's chasing behind you, which is like the best odds you're gonna have in any fight. So remember, these snake idiots have been living and working in Sense Fortress and they still fall for their own traps. They're stupid, really stupid. Blight Town, God help you if the fates put you in Blight Town. This area is difficult to survive as a gamer, let alone as just a regular ass person. Like you can stub your toe and then be poisoned and me? dead in 20 minutes. You are generally protected from the elements, even though it feels like your shelter is a strong fart away from just blowing away. The place also has a crap ton of water, but there's a catch. It's all poisonous. Luckily, poison damage is very slow in Dark Souls, so you won't immediately die from one sip. And there is purple moss cloth which cures poison um, that drops from the blow dart snipers. So here is your daily water routine for surviving in Blight Town. Jot this down. Number one, scoop some poison water into something that you can use as a pot. Number two, start the boiling process to clean as much of the water as you possibly can. Number three, risk certain death by climbing up, finding and killing a blow dart sniper to get a purple moss clump. Number four, drink as much water as you possibly can as the poison slowly kills you. Then pop the purple moss clump in your mouth when you're on the brink of death to stop the poison from eventually murdering you. Rinse and repeat. As for the food in Blight Town, you're gonna want to have gravity do most of the work. Remember that as a player in Dark Souls, you have the physical dexterity of a block of cheese. The enemies are equally as prone to the jank that causes them to constantly fall off the edge and die. But as you, you have a much better chance of being able to monkey your way through this jungle and set up traps and baits that will inevitably cause enemies to fall to their death. I'm pretty sure if you just like climbed up there on the edge of that, you could easily bait enemies to just walk right off the edge and die. You would essentially have to become an expert in guerrilla warfare to survive in this dump. But if you survive long enough to camp a spot where enemies fell and die often, find a consistent way to purify water, you might actually be able to pull it off. Lost Isolith. Chances of survival are now dwindling into the single digits. So buckle up though, I do have a plan for this. Right off the bat, if you are dropped into the first half of this area, you're just immediately dead. If you get lucky and get plopped into the second half of this area without the freaking lava, uh, you still have a lot of challenges. First, you're probably thinking, I'm totally screwed. There's no water in this entire area, but there is. It's in this hidden area you're probably not gonna find, and it's full of enemies to die to, and of of course, all of the water is poisonous. Now, assuming you can even get some of this water, bring it back to whatever little safe haven that you have. There is no purple moss clumps in this entire area. And remember, you're surrounded by a lake of lava, so there is no chance in hell that you're going to make it to an area that does have one. But just when all hope is lost, this little weirdo shows up. These are vagrants. They're rare, they're weird as hell, and come in lots of different forms. They spawn due to players in other games dying, and there's a 25% chance that a white vagrant will spawn, which has a 10% chance of dropping a purple moss clump when it dies. So to recap, 50% of this area is instant death, multiplied by a 25% chance that the correct vagrant type will spawn, multiplied by a very generous 50% chance that you'll actually catch it and kill it, and then multiplied by a 10% chance that the dead vagrant actually drops the purple moss clump that you need. Multiply that all together and your best case scenario with a lot going right is a survival chance of 00.625% in Lost Isolith. And by the way, I am assuming that you can get like a barrel's worth of water and that like mixing a purple moss clump into it purifies the entire batch because otherwise there is no way that a vagrant will appear consistently enough for you to survive. And finally, for food, the only thing that I could find that you could get consistently would be these little guys. And they are kind of cute and they don't seem to fight back, so you can munch on them all day long, baby. 
you'd have to find a way to get past this guy who is a pain in the ass even as you know the chosen undead so don't give me this bullshit of like oh i would just fight him and get past him no you wouldn't no you would probably have to just monkey your way on the side of the bridge to get across to him so that you could go get some food but you could make it work and that is it babes let me know your thoughts on what areas i missed what things in certain areas that i may have not thought of or how you personally would be able to survive what other videos you want me to cover my wife and i also have this channel Channel where we stream a lot of other content, a lot of videos of her experience with FromSoft games. So give it a like and a subscribe. And thank you so much for watching.